Right, here we go, folks. Day four, Gold Cup day. Really looking forward to the Gold Cup, ain't we, boys? Oh, yes. yes. Absolutely. Marvelous. Right, so what we'll try and do is we'll try and sort of cover off the other races first, leaving the majority of the time for the Gold Cup, which we all know is what we really want to talk about. Um, so as time is against us, nap back then, boys. Let's get cracking. Um, the first race, the JCB Triumph. Um, anybody want to start us off today? Go on, Mark. Yeah, why not? Um, right, I think this is quite an interesting race. I think there's some good top quality horses in there. If you're looking at horses, um, you know, for odds wise, we have a bit of an each way price. Um, you know, there's a couple that I picked out, like uh, Nasser Lamb for Gary Moore, which is currently 25 to 1. Um, a horse called Tax for Max, which recently moved to Willie Mullins, had first mm. run up the hurdles, and its current price at 33s. But I'm sticking with Tritonic. Alan King. Um, I, I was toying between uh, this horse and another one called Adagio, trained by David Pipe. Mm. Um, but the reason why I'm sticking with Tritonic is that since it switched the hurdles, its, it, it, it's performances, um, first of all, um, in the Bet365 Juvenile Hurdle, um, beating Casalupi, also trained by Gary Moore. It, as, Sean's, as Sean's once said before, come from the heavens, it looked beaten, this horse and just absolutely powered on to victory, um, what, what was very impressive. And then done it again um, most recently um, in the Close Brothers Adonis Juvenile Hurdle, again getting the better of Casalupi. Um, mm. And, you know, I think Alan King's got a very, very good horse on his hands here. Um, it's only four years old, um, it's lightly raced, um, it's going to relish the ground, um, weight it's not going to be an issue. Um, mm. And I said, there's a few other horses in there. We've got Calixios, who's just recently been moved. Henry de Bromhead, got Zan here, still declared to run. So it's a very, very interesting field. But mm. if I'm going by uh, form and pace for me, um, I think the winner of the JCB Triumph Hurdle, um, to me, is the current favourite, Tritonic, trained by Alan King. OK, mate. All right. Well, I'm going to lead on from that then, lads. Purely based on the fact that I've been a bit torn between Zanny here and Calixios. Um, you can't really split those two. In fact, you, it's hard to split Tritonic with them as well, in all honesty. Um, on terms of ground they've handled, again, you can't really split them. They've all they've all sort of, you know, run in similar conditions, similar sort of distances, so it, it is a tough one. Um, I, the reason why I not dismiss Tritonic per se, but the reason why I've lent towards the other two is I just think the other two have had just slightly more competitive racing. Um, it might not come down to that. I could be well wrong. But um, it does seem to me that those two have had just slightly sort of stronger races to, you know, to stamp their authority on. Um, and I say, I could be well wrong. Um, but obviously, then you then, the next question you ask yourself, and I don't want to dwell on it too long, but of course, the next question is, is as the move from Elliot's, you know, and the, the whole Elliot Gate, <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> is that going to have a massive effect on the horses? In all truthful, we don't know. Uh, mm. It may do, it may not. Um, we all have said many times they're quite highly strung, but then we all know horses are like, you've got your mite bites that are, you know, on the edge, <laughs> and then you've got your sort of like your laid back type characters that seem like, you know, sort of like Native River, you know what I mean? They, they can be very contrasting personalities, just like we all can. So I think, you know, I think it just really depends on the horse in all honesty. I think some you could probably move yards and it wouldn't bat an eyelid and then there'll be others that will be like, oh God, this is new, what's going on, you know, blah, blah, blah. So mm. um, I don't know, but um, I'll take it just a gamble myself personally uh, on Quilictalos that, um, that um, yeah, maybe it won't affect it. And um, yeah, some decent decent price there at four to one as well. Um and uh, yeah, so I'll take a little stab that um, maybe uh, I'll get lucky and the move won't have an effect and uh, mm. I'll still run out the winner. So that's that's my choice anyway. Jamie, do you want to give us the next one? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I really do. I really like watching the, the Triumph Hurdle because there's some really good winners in the past and there was like the like of like Pentland Hills on 2019, Defi de Soy, 17, Peace and Co, 15. Now, who won 14? Come on. Who knows all the false knowledge? No, Tiger Roll. Tiger Roll. Uh, well yeah. done. Yeah. Tiger Roll. <laughs> Tiger Roll. Then you've got Air Connor. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
at Furlough yeah. and catch it, Detroit City mm. in 2006. So... I think there's going to be some really good horses going to be winning this. I think they're going to be right up there to, uh, on that particular race. Um, I can see Tritonic up there. Um, I'm I'm leading against Tritonic, but I have seen him on the flat and he was really impressive when he won at Fosslass. And that's a quite a hard track to win on the flat, on the Fosslass. And he's been winning on the all-weather and that. But he, he's been transferring over hurdles really well. And he's just learning um, how to jump these hurdles in an economic, quick way. But I can see Tritonic as a, as a, I would say, a champion hurdle contender for next year, Tritonic. Um, yeah, yeah, he, could be, he could be close on that for next year. But I'm going towards um, Adagio. Because what I've seen in my own eyes, I thought, uh, watching at the, in the trials, I thought he... I thought he, he jumped economically. I thought he he ran, he, he travelled well on the course. Even he was a troll. It was a trolls race, and I think the decent grand would would be in his favour. Um, and I think he could do something like he did in the trolls, winning that because you can normally tend to have uh, troll um, troll winners transform to the festival and win them uh, them type of races. So. To me, I think um, 10 to 1 uh, each way for Adagio for anti post is quite a good bet. Mm. Um, and hopefully, Tom Scudamore will, um, will get another win mm. on the on the festival. So, yeah, it's a nice prize for, for an horse that's got, yeah. got ability. Yeah. So. And, a, <clears> and a good jockey as well with Tom Scudamore as well. So, mm. I think I'm edging towards uh, Adagio each way on that one. Okay, mate. Shawnee? Yeah, I fully agree with Jamie, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I look at us, <laughs> we spoke <laughs> about. Um, Tritonic last week, a uh, week before when it won. Um, clearly, there's capabilities there. It's going to go on to be a very good horse. Uh, for me, the thing that has swayed it with Adagio is that Cheltenham form, like Jamie says. You go, in, you go into the festival, you need a horse that knows that track. And a first mm. and second so far at Cheltenham isn't bad form. Mm. Um, for a horse running against a lot, if not the rest of the field, haven't had a stab at that track it definitely sways it at that sort of price. It's mm. definitely going to sway it for a horse that has, again, got great capabilities beating Nassalam. Uh, was it Nassalam? Yeah, it was Nassalam, wasn't it? Mm. Um, which was set, was put on a pedestal early doors as the next great Gary Moore horse. Mm. Um, so Adagio going in and doing that for me is what swung the vote in the triumph to him. Again, no surprise if Tritonic goes on to win this because there's great capabilities and a great engine for a horse that didn't jump well to win like he did. Mm. Shows that there's a bit of class probably above what he's running against at the moment, with all due respect. Mm. Um, but for me, Adagio is, is the value horse in this race. Okay. Um, I mean, for me, also, we almost spent, we mentioned last year about Solo. Solo mm. was absolutely, everybody went, oh, Solo, fantastic. Won that mm. on the Kenton. They went, right, triumph winner. Goes and goes to runs the triumph, and he absolutely had an absolute stinker of a run. I'm there. It's, yeah. a, it's a total difference, you know. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of those things. Well, it does mm -hmm. find them out sometimes, as we've said before, Sean, not me in conversations. It, it, you never know. No, nah, exactly. This course does catch you out. And like you say, if, mm -hmm. if you've got that horse that you're plotting in there that has had that course form, mm -hmm. it, it does give you an edge. And at 12, 10 to 1 is a fantastic each way price. Yeah. OK, all right, lads. Well, let's move on then. Um, country Hurdle next, then. Mm. Um, anybody want to give us a shout? Oh, OK, then. Uh, I'll go for... I was impressed with uh, the shunter yesterday, hmm. uh, winning at Kelso, um, and also winning that handicap hurdle, the bonus race. Hmm. Uh, but he's got so many entries, though. But I'm mm -hmm. not. Yeah. Really, I, I think yeah, yeah, I've seen him around a few times. Yeah, definitely. The old shunter. But I think he, he might go for the camp. <laughs> Um, but I've, I've <laughs> do I really want to go for him? I'm not really sure because he can jump a fence and he can jump a hurdles as well. Mm. So, who knows? But, um, at nine to one, that's a nice, that's a good little price, at really. On any post mm. from Skybet each way, mm. yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of a bit of a bigger price, mm. and I've, I'm looking at um, the Gary Moore, um, 50 ball. <laughs> um, so if if the grains come up decent, he's got an absolute good chance. I'm going next, by the way. Now yeah. <laughs> he's got he's got a real good chance. I mean, he he's been in the mix. He can he can run in the big fields like he did in the Betfair hurdle, 
I thought he done. I thought he ran really well considering he was hanging left. Um, and he's got. I think he's got a great chance. I mean, in the others you got the other Willie Mullins uh, with the with uh, Missy Dooley's. You got the uh, was it Ganna Ganna um, is another is another horse um, with Willie Mullins. He, he ran in in a leopard stand um, grade one, so he's dropping down. Um, he's dropping down a couple of grades. He finished uh, fifth. And he might have a good run. Um, and he was behind um, gentleman's man's game, so he could he could he could go into a place as well with an eighth grade place. Mm. But uh, for me, fifty ball, Gary Moore, fourteen to one, I think, uh, with an eight way price. Fair um, enough, uh, wise man, you are indeed. Um, <laughs> right, so obviously, quite clearly, my choice is fifty ball. Um, oh. Yeah. Jamie, you said most of what I've had, I sort of got it down on my notes, really. You know, he's had, what, uh, what uh, five, six, seven, seven runs or something, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, and he's won two of them and placed in the others. So, I mean, you can't ask for a hell of a lot more. Um, mm. He was second last time out to current market favourite, um, Soaring Glory. Soaring um, Glory, yeah. I mean, he's only down by three lengths. I know three lengths is quite a bit, but, um, you know, one of my little notes, Sean, is the old Cheltenham factor. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Soaring Glory hasn't run there. Do you know what I mean? As you say, so you just don't know. Do you know what I mean? Maybe maybe that might find him out. You know, maybe mm -hmm. 50 ball might handle it a bit better. Um, Hopefully the silks will be an omen as well and don't fall in the last. Yeah, let's hope so. But um, <laughs> yeah, so Jamie, you said most of what I was going to say about him, really. But I yeah, I stayed well, away from the top of the market. And I just thought, again, at 14, he represented a bit of value. Um for decent bit of form at the right time, placed in the others. Do you know what I mean? I just thought it was a good shout, really. So, so yeah, I'm in agreement with James. There's two people you've got agreeing with you, yeah. Jamie. Aren't you a lucky boy? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> don't phone, living don't his phone best phone life. Up. Yeah, well, don't, don't phone up the police to say I burgled your house and looked at your notes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. Okay, then, Sean, who do you fancy in that one, then, mate? Uh, well, unfortunately, I think I am going to have to go with uh, the favourite on this one. Sorry, Glory. Um, I believe I mentioned him when I spoke about was it Brave Man's Game, mm. um, where the only horse to actually beat Brave Man's Game this season or in the last couple of uh, months has been Soaring Glory. Um, for John Joe, I mean, if I'm going to stick to my guns and say form is key when you go into these races and I pick mm. Brave Man's Game because he lost to Soaring Glory, it'd be silly of me to not back Soaring Glory yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... It's a head over heart one. I'm going to go on a bit of logic in this one again. There's not not a Cheltenham run in it, but it was a fantastic last run. Um, in him in him a couple of weeks ago he was also I think third to my Drogo not so long ago. Who again we saw yesterday was a very good horse. So again, the form on this horse and Brave Man's Game is just getting. Hmm. Better and better and framed yeah, yeah, every yeah. time. I mean, if you're if we're going down that road, you can start this side and it down to if my drogo is that good and soaring glory is that good. Where's that put brave man's game if he can mix it with them? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Again, it's more of a logical bet on this one. It is a minefield of a race. Hmm. What's in it? But I am going to stick with soaring glory based on the back of brave man's game logic and the form going into it I think he's got a great chance yeah. after a defeat to my Drogo who was won comfortably yesterday okay Matt fair enough Mark who do you fancy in the country Heard him. Well, I'm very surprised Sean didn't go for a Willie Mullins horse because he's got a <laughs> minefield of runners ending mm. that <laughs> one <laughs> um, but no I'm actually going with a horse that Jamie mentioned uh, the shunter I was actually very impressed uh, with his performance yesterday at Kelso um, trained by Emmett Mullins um, you know since uh, the horse move yards has had four firsts in its seven runs. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a course and distance winner at Cheltenham. So as Sean says, that's always a key. That's always massive to, you know, getting a performance at Cheltenham. It's interesting, though, for what Kelso done yesterday, actually. They actually, um, you know, they um, raised uh, the prize money for that race yesterday mm. and also put an extra £100,000 bonus for, for the winner of that race if they can also go on to the Cheltenham Festival and win. Oh, and as okay. uh, I think Jamie um, stipulated, this horse has been entered into a, a number of races, I believe. Mm. Um, I believe the Ballymore is another one. I'm not too yeah. sure. Um, and I think maybe one or two other races. So, 
a couple of races over the fences as well. So I think. Yeah, and obviously, as you said, Jamie, you know, like he's jumped over the hurdles, he's jumped over the fences. He's, you know, like it's a very, very impressive horse. Um, mm. And um, yeah, I think it holds a, a massive bulb. It's saw in glory, as Sean mentioned as well. It's another top horse I was looking at as well. Um, mm. Like I said, Sean, I'm still quite a bit. Right, you've not gone for Willie Mullins, mate. For money. <laughs> There's still five more races, don't worry. Oh, oh listen, don't worry. Um, but no, I, I just think for me, over form, um, and I think especially in its last race, um, and at nine to one as well, at the moment, I think the Shanta mm. um, is an improving eight year old. There's more to come from this horse. So for me, mm. uh, it is the Shanta at nine to one. Okay, mate. Thank you. All right. Well, that's everybody, isn't it, on that one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. So let's move on then. Sean, I'll let you start the next one. The Albert Bartley then. Yeah, I'm going to go for Tory Graf. Okay. For, uh, depending on what happens uh, mm. at the moment with this one. Um, I, I, I'd imagine at the moment, well, well, I, I'm torn between two. Annoyingly at the moment, they're Gordon Elliott horses or whomever is in control at that yard at the yeah. moment. Let's not go down yeah. that road, but let's let's yeah. be honest. Um, Fakira was one that I had picked out a couple of, well, maybe a couple of months ago now that I was hoping to run, I think it was over the Christmas period, but mm. due to COVID, I don't think the horses travelled. I'm pretty sure I picked oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Fakira yeah. out because of that. Um, so for me, it's between the two. It's a minefield of a race, again, mm. uh, <laughs> depending on what's going to happen. With this saga that I'm sure we'll hear about for weeks to come until the festival starts. So, but the two horses that I've mentioned are very, Tory Graf is a consistent horse. Mm. Again, it's a Giggins Town, so I can't see it going, but I will mention it because it is still in the betting. Mm. Um, a consistent type winning twice on the bounce, I believe, second just before that. So there's four minute. Mm. Um, but for, uh, for Kira, for me, seems um, a very, very good hurdler or did seem a very good hurdler when I mentioned it at the beginning of um, December I believe hmm. um, again I'm torn between the two but due to reasons I, I prefer Tory Graf because it's still in the betting but obviously we all know what's going on hmm. um, so if that's subsequently a non-runner I will be plumping for Fakira who does seem a, a slick hurdler a quick hurdler just always seems to be a bridesmaid at the moment and very yeah. rarely a bride um, has capabilities of winning this sort of race, but again, we we don't know. Yeah, well, as I say, and I mean the original BHA judgment said that they couldn't run any horses while in the UK while under investigation. It would seem yeah. that's over. Exactly, that's Perfect. what I mean. So, but so we don't know. But yeah, yeah. decisions have been made. Giggins yeah. has to stick with him. A decision yeah. has been made. The yard will still be operating under someone else. So depending yeah. on what they choose to send over. Yeah, yeah. Annoyingly for me, I'll stick my guns and it yeah, yeah. was one of the two Elliots, so I'm not sure. Um, and if all else fails, there's a Mullins favourite that I can lump on, so it's not a problem. <laughs> right. OK, <laughs> then. Right, let's move on to you then, Mark. I knew you like in Albert Bartley. Yeah, there's only one that I like, and uh, it's Paul Nichols, um, Barbados Bucks. Um, eight I'm going after Mark, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, right. um, yeah, again, you know what? I was toying between um, Willie Mullins. I think I'm starting to turn into Sean a little bit. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, look, this is um, a six year old, but I, I think it's got a lot of potential. Um, you know, it's had distances and courses uh, running at Cheltenham, but it's been fairly disappointing. Um, but, you know, since being switched to hurdles and being switched to a, a longer distance, it seems to have done the trick for this horse. You know, since doing that, it finished um, second uh, at, at Stratford, at, um, two miles six, and then being up to three miles and back-to-back -back wins at um, Subble uh, before recently comfortable win at Kempton. And that's the key for me, I think, that We've seen a lot of horses that have either switched the fences or um, switched the hurdles or switched the flats, whichever it may be. Mm. Um, and some horses have either taken to that or not. Mm. And this is um, one of two Paul Nichols is, um, that I think is I think is going to have a good day. And we'll get more into that later. Um, but for this one, um, and a price of eight to one as well. And as Sean said, it's a minefield of a race. You know, at the moment, um, you don't know where some horses are going to go but I think this has only been entered into this race as well um, yeah. but as I say it's been ups in trip um, it's been switched to hurdles um, it dropped 
dropped back in trips slightly for its latest race. Um, I, I believe two miles seven um, or two miles six. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. But again, I don't think that's a problem. Um, but a, another one quickly, just for price, which is also Paul Nichols, uh, three under five. Uh, which has also won the last couple of races. Um, I'm going to leave nicely on to you then, Jamie. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yes. So, so like I said, I'm I'm going with Barbados Bucks in this one. Okay, cool. All right. Well, sandwiched completely in the middle. Um, <laughs> I'm completely torn between Barbados Bucks and uh, three, three under through five. Um <laughs> And I've sat here thinking, well, oh, you know, which one, which one, which one? And again, as you quite rightly say, Mark, there isn't an hell of a lot you can spit them with. No. Um, you know, the only thing I could possibly find in favour of three through under five is he's just been campaigned at that slightly sharper trip. Um, whereas, as you say, Big Bucks has gone up in trip a little bit over a few races. Um so that's about the only thing I could really spit the two of them with. Um, as you say, they've both got really good form right now, um, done what they needed to do, you know what I mean? And, and it's just been so tough to try and decide between the two. But I erred on the side of caution and just went with um, three under through five, just purely based on the fact that they say just ever so slightly more campaigned at the, at the sharper trip. So... Um, I won't steal too much of your thunder then, Jamie. I'll let you carry on from where I've finished. So, uh, so Mark, you've got Barbados Bucks and I've gone for three through under five, but I'll let you carry on, Jamie. Right, well, I've, well, me carrying it on, uh, to be honest with you, I really couldn't really find a standout horse because for some reason the Albert Bowl doesn't really seem to be this year like a standout. It's like, Nothing mm. I think we've seen better fields in years gone by, no doubt. Yeah, um, I think I've done this before from last year when I've done another preview, and I've just gone, no, I can't really see something, and I've just mm. picked out something, and it never came in, and it's just, mm. it's just one of them, that one of them, them races where it just, this does not entertain you the potato race. Um, mm. but with with, <laughs> with this one, I went, I went up with um three under through five because. Um, the race that he, he won at Musselboro, that was impressive. I thought he ran really well and he jumped well at, mm. um, at, at Musselboro. And Musselboro is a bit of a, a sharp galloping track, really, and quite flat. So I'm sure he can cope with the Cheltenham. But mm. I would say that with an each way price, I think the Paul Nichols will, will get one of the two, <laughs> Barbados Buck or the other one, in, in, the, in the, one of the places. And plus, also, you got some of the um, the betting, um, like mm. Sky Bet and 365 and mm. Paddy Power. They most probably do like five places and that. So I would, you know, just have a look and see what you think of it. But I would go on for three under through five for an each way price. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, that's that one covered off then, lads. That was a quick one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, again, another of the undercards, as we've said before, you've got the Hunter Chase. Uh, next on the timeline. Um, obviously, we're going to be skipping the Gold Cup. We'll come back to that, as we said before. Um, I'm sure it's still be an exciting race, as always. Um, mm. My little notes I've got here, you know, at the moment, it looks like Bob and Cole on the ratings has got it. Um, whether that's the case, we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, I've, I'll start us off then, lads. I've gone for Hayes Hill uh, for Melanie Rowley. Um, there's one six out of seven chase starts. So, um you know, I, I think it's a pretty decent horse to be looking at 16s, to be honest. Um, it won at the festival the, uh, in 2019, uh, the Hunter Chase then, and then it also won again at Cheltenham in, in the May uh, following. So, um, you know, got some decent course form, as you always allude to, Sean. Mm -hmm. um, and again, at a nice price at 16s, I thought that was a nice price for a horse with a bit of course form. So, so that's uh, my, my selection for Hunt's Chase. Uh, Mark, who do you like in that one? Sean's going to love me. Uh, this is one of... Uh, we've got four races to get through, um, minus the Gold Cup. The other three are all Willie Mullins horses <laughs> that I've gone for. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm with the current favourite, uh, Bramway, um, who finished runner-up in this last year. Uh, sorry, not, not last year, sorry, 2019. Mm. Um, when it, um, I wouldn't say, you know, if you could say it was a shock when it lost to a horse called It Came to Pass, a massive price of 66 to 1. Mm. Um, you know, I, 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 you know it's, it just happens in racing. Yeah. Um, you know, 
Um, but yeah, look, I just think Willie Mullins comes here with some real top quality horses in some of these races. And I say this is one of them. Mm. Um, you know, it showed that when it was, um, I mean, that was 11 to 4 uh, that he ran in 2019. Uh, it's now, I believe, current price 2 to 1. Um, red hot favourite and 2009 is when it came to pass is at the moment 9 to 1 um, mm -hmm. but you know I think this is a very smart horse that I think Willie Mullins has got here yeah? um, you know it's ran a couple of races at a shorter distance and it's recently been up in trip as well to get itself fully prepared for this one um, and you know there isn't too much that I can really talk about it because um, I'm not as much of a Mullins lover um, <laughs> <laughs> But I do feel that Willie Mullins um, will have this horse more ready this time around than it will um, than two years ago. Um, so, yeah, my selection is Bill away at two to one. OK, mate. Go on then, Sean, since he's thrown your name in there a few times, that you can, you can go on next. Go on. <laughs> yeah, no, I fully agree with Mark. Uh, <laughs> surprising. <laughs> uh, look, we know... As Mark touched on, it did. Uh, it was second as was last year. Mark, you were right. It was last year. Uh, it was second to it comes to pass. Uh, again, a sixty-six to one winner is a bit of a shock, but not in this sort of race um, because it can find mm. those sort of results. Um, yeah, yeah. I do think Billaway is a winner in the making. I mean, at Cheltenham is a winner in the making, shall I say? Because it's a very consistent type elsewhere. Mm. As Mark alluded to, each race they seem to be just up in the mileage, so to speak, um, to be prepping the horse for this. Uh, mm. Unbeaten over the last two starts, always in the top two um, when it runs. So it's more than capable of being bang on there. And the more or the closer we get to the festival, you can kind of see the Mullins team is getting stronger. Um, I wouldn't say this is his top trumps card. I do think that there will be question marks. I think Bob and Co for Nichols stands a great chance. Again, it's a very well-backed winning favourite over his last couple, three or two runs, mm. where the distances have been on one of them was astronomical. It was 70, 80-odd lengths or something like that. Um, again, you don't know what was in that field, but you have to beat what's in front of you. Yeah, of course you do, yeah. You know, what lines up with you, you have to beat, regardless. We've seen horses that we assume would win by 100 lengths get beat by 50. So mm. that we don't take anything away from Bob and Co, who mm. I believe will be very much um, the competitor for Bill Away, if there is another um, in this race. But I do believe Bill Away, yeah, for me, will win this race. OK, all right. Who do you like then, Jamie? Um, I'm looking at two um, in the Fox Hunters chase. <laughs> and one is the Red Indian uh, beat Killer Crow. That's uh, the old wick uh, point to point, um, winning by 15 lengths and a small field. Um, not really particularly, uh, you know, known for the old wick uh, course or anything like that. And and the other one is uh, called the uh, is it called the Burley or Burley? Oh, the Burley, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, he ran at um, Wing Canton uh, last time out, winning by three and a three quarter lengths. But that the was in the yellow silks, isn't it? Sorry, mate. Is that the blue and yellow silks. Yes, I think it is. I think um, it is, yeah. yeah. Um, even he ran in a, in a small uh, small field, a um, nine-runner race. Mm. He normally tends to um, make a few mistakes, novice mistakes over the fences. Mind you, you need to take, you know, you need to jump well over Cheltenham fences. And mm. and this year, we're going to have no amateurs now. We're going to have professional mm -hmm. riders. Yeah. So he's going to be a little bit different on, on that aspect. Um, so in reading between the two lines, I mean, on the form wise, I think I would say with an each way selection, I'll go with uh Red Indian. Um, even though I have not seen seen mm. him run, not mm. I've just seen the form and just seen it, I would say because the fox, uh, our fox hunters is mostly where people normally watch them on the point to point front. Mm. So from there, so I would say Red Indian each way at 12 to 1. Okay, mate, all right, fair enough. Right, then we'll swiftly on again then, lads. We've got the Paddy Power Mares chase. Mm. Um, I'll kick off then. Um, and he made a favourite for me. Uh, Who, who's training with that one? Uh, that's well, that's you've got me there. Really Mullins, sure it's, it? the Mullins I'm pretty yeah. sure it's Willie yeah. Mullins, yeah. Yeah. Um, next. <laughs> yeah. Uh, blimey, how consistent is she? 75% strike rate on chase. 
Um, beaten a few of these previously. Uh, had Shattered Love back by six lengths last time out. Um, won it in 2019, is that right, I think? Um, yeah. or, or it was the OLGB, whatever it was, there, is it? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, even back then when, what was she? Didn't really fire that day, did she, if I remember rightly? But, um, you know, hadn't been with Mullins long, really come on since then. I, I looked at that on the betting and I just don't see anything that can beat it, really, in my honest mm-hmm. opinion. So, um, yeah, go on then, Sean. I'll let you add a bit more if you've got anything else to say. I mean, there's not really a lot more you can say about about this man, to be honest with you. Like you say, um, plenty in hand when beating Shattered Love. Mm. Uh, not so long ago at Nace. Um, again, was only three lengths behind Alaho um, mm. in the race before that. So, again, form uh, for me is one of those that you look into and it depends how highly you rate Alaho, which everybody does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look at this race and you look maybe Shattered Love it can put it mm. in the mix. But, again, that's an older horse. So, where's the capability? Like, you know... Mm. Yeah. Yes, the older legs would tell, but we're talking three years difference in this one. Mm. So up a hill, it pays dividends to have yeah, a younger light yeah. horse in that respect. So, um, yeah, there's not a lot much more to say. LMA, I believe, will take all the beating. You have got the likes of Annie, Annie Mack in there, mm. uh, Magical Light, Happy Diva, those sort of types that have been around for a while, what Magical yeah. Light and Happy Diva. Um but yeah, I think it's going to take a very good horse or something else to happen um, yeah. to take away LMA's win at Cheltenham in yeah, the mess. A, I completely agree. I think LMA's going that way, where some might be coming. Yeah, that way. there's some uh, of them in there, like 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 yeah. um, you got Calvary as well for Mullings. But again, you know he's got this 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 horse of LMA in there will be the main vocal point. Yeah, um, as I mentioned, Annie Annie Mac hasn't done anything wrong. Um, mm. In the build up, but mind you, Annie, Annie Mac hasn't jumped that, that many fences, has she? But she no, can, she, can call, she can cause a bit of an upset, though, can't she? Exactly, that's what I mean. So, again, you're looking at the younger leg in that. So, I, I don't, I mean, as an intro shout, eight to nines, I think Annie Mac was, is, a, is an absolutely fantastic price for John Joe O'Neill, who's banging form himself. Mm. Um, a little bit more to yeah. beat LMA at the moment, that's all. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, go on then, Jamie. You you piped up there a bit, so go on. You can carry on, mate. <laughs> um, well, I can't really say much because everybody's taking my notes for any, any <laughs> day. I think. <laughs> okay, I, fair I, enough. I think I, I think I better start talking to the MR MR five. Um, <laughs> um, the only thing I've, I've, with the others, I mean, I right, with you got Annie Mac. Um, speaking with other other horses, you have got Annie Mac who's done really well, um, mm. transferring from hurdles to fences, and she's mm. really improved. Um, I I I think she'll be in the mix. I don't think she'll be that close with any uh, with any May. Um, mm. But I know that she'll be in the. I was saying mm. the top four. She's no yeah. monk. Yeah. Um, I've looked at um, another another horse, but that's with another Mullins, Mrs Mullins. Mm. Uh, as it Augusta Gold? Um, yeah. she ran really well. She's done. She's been right. Um, she's been um, racing at the, this distance at two miles four. Um, and then she went to punching stand for the trials for the uh, for the Grand National, gone that uh, three miles plus race and finished second. So I've got a funny feeling if she does run in the mayor's chase, this could be a prep race for either the Grand National or the Irish Grand National. Um, and she could she's like no mug as well. She can mm. she can go running different dif- distances with two miles four and three miles plus. So that would be an up, you know, another each way. Um, for that horse as well, for Augusta. But me, me main one, which I've backed, is any May really. Okay, mate. Mark, is it a foursome? <laughs> Excuse the <laughs> choice of words. Well, it's. Mm. What else can I say about? <laughs> what What can I say that fifteen to eight mm. is a brilliant price mm. for a horse that is so good, mm. um, and you know. When we talk about this horse that won sixth in the mayor's hurdle back in 2019, that was won by Roxana that year, it's mm. come on leaps and bounds. Mm. And like what Sean, what Jamie, what yourself, mm. you know, as all said, it's the whole like the races that it's won. Mm. It's just been so exciting to watch when it finished mm. a couple of limbs behind Alaho. And may I remind you, 
this horse didn't put a foot wrong in that race. It was always Alaho was just always doing enough to win that race. Mm. Um, you know, it finished second at Punches Towns, built me up Buttercup, didn't like the heavy ground. Um, but other than that, this is a special horse, and I like mm. the look of LMA as mm. well. Um, and there isn't much more I can say because all of you guys just taken pretty much all my <laughs> bullet points as well. <laughs> but, um, but consistency could, is spot on, isn't it? Yeah. But but I could I could throw a little bit of a spanner though. But Ooh. could it be something to do with the like with the grand? Because at Cheltenham there is there is talk of watering because mm. the, the grand is is drying up yeah. and it's drying up quickly. Mm. So I mean, all right, there's um there's uh, there's a I've seen a weather forecast there could be bit of rain or wind or anything like from Wednesday to Thursday but there was there is talk of having like watering and there could be like quick like good ground um I'm just wondering would that would that um impede her? I don't think so do in my is, so do you reckon that that if it's anything other than say soft or around about that mark that it may be the ground that will cause more of the issue as opposed to the horses around could be yeah, yeah. okay I mean, I mean you're looking you you I mean all right, we've been we've, we've been doing preview from one day one day two and day three and we're doing day four and we're selecting some of the horses have done really well on heavy soft conditions mm -hmm. now now the the weather forecast is starting to change quite considerably mm -hmm. that's a big word for me <laughs> and it's really and um and to me I think you're gonna get I think you're gonna get a few surprises. Um, no doubt about it. If if the if the weather holds up, and mm. also the grand, because I've got I've got a sneaky suspicion this is going to go like you know, um, good, but on the on the far side of good. Yeah, I know um, you mean. But um, but it's going to be interesting though. Ne next, well, was it next two weeks? Mm, week and a half. So, now, yeah, yeah, week and a half. It's going to be interesting. What what's what's going to happen? Well, no, the might... weather in this country it could even get cooled off. <laughs> <laughs> you never bloody know in this country yeah exactly anyway carry on okay all right well let's try and wrap up the next one so we can get on to the gold cup then uh the martin pipe anyone got a fancy in it uh, yes i'll yes. go i'll oh, go on. jamie can go no jamie can right, go okay um well really this this all that i backed at kempton um at 66 to 1 and won really well and that the horse is boring bill trained by emma lavelle and he was ridden by Ben Jones. And I think Ben Jones could, I think it's Ben Jones. I think he'd be riding him if he if he's got the opportunity. Mm. He ran really well at, um, at two miles, five furlongs. And he done he he was like, you know, very sneakily, you know, in getting into the race at coming around the bend and coming on on the near side rail. And he ran really well. Um he jumped well. He, I think Bourne and Bill came from um transferred from been pulled in stable to Emma Lavelle and took a bit of time to get used to the uh, training regime and everything and changing the stable. Mm. And um, I thought he'd done really well. I've got, I should have an each way chance, especially if, if Skybet does like five or six places and then um, he coming in the mix and being, you know, in the, in the top six mm. at 16 to one. That's a good little, that's a good each way price. Definitely for Bore and Bill for me. Okay, mate. Go on in, Sean. You sound like you had a fancy. So go on. Yeah, no surprise it's a Mullins again. Um, but this time, I'm, it's, not, it's not the fact, because I believe the favourite would probably be that gentleman to me um, who comes into it again on solid form. Um, not a lot to really argue the favouritism of the price. Um, but for me, I like the spot, probably the second string is Galapape, um, who, again, on this one, it's a form-based one. I know a lot of people have spoke highly of the drill deal. Um I believe has been mentioned a couple of times. I've yep. seen that mentioned yep. elsewhere as well. Uh, well, Jonah Paffy came third, no, second to him by two and a half lengths um, not so long ago. The issue is the jumping was poor on that day um, and yet still managed to stay on uh, into second or remain into second. Mm. If the drill deal is going to be the deal that everyone is alluding to, which I don't doubt, mm. I don't see a lot in this field that would, come close to stopping J Jenna Paffy if mm. the jumping becomes a little bit more consistent. Yeah. That that was the issue. There'd be a good couple of jumps and then would get in too close and then have to find himself for a couple more. Uh, you can't afford that at Cheltenham. It loses you races. It loses you yeah. races fast. Mm. Um, 
but yeah, uh, like I say, I'll go and I'm form on that one. I'm franking it with the drill deal. If that's going on to better races at the festival, uh, Jenna Paffy for me. For okay. mine. Mark, who'd you like? I'm going up against Sean Mullins versus Mullins because I've gone with a favourite gentleman to me. Yeah. So you never thought you'd see me do three selections in Willie Mullins' yard, would you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but no, as Sean said, you know, this horse has also got an entry in the Ballymore, but I think that this is going to be the right step to go for the Martin Pipe. Um, he had a 460-day break um, from being switched over in France to Willie Mullins' yard, um, and it won the Nace Business Club members' maiden hurdle in impressive style. Mark Walsh was the jockey, and he said, you know, it was, uh, there's plenty more. It was such a comfortable ride, um, and... You know, as Sean just mentioned, um, your, your, the, your selection that you just picked, Sean, what was the yeah, name? Passing. That's, passing. It. That's it, six to one. Um, so again, it was, you know, like toying between those two. Um, but I just think going by it, it's four minutes last race. Um, and I think it's had, it likes to have a nice long layoff. Um, I think we'll relish running at Cheltenham. You want, a, you want a few little each way selections. I like the lot of um, Monte Cristo for Nicky Henderson. Um, you've got a horse called Ella Philippi, uh, Fergo O'Brien, which is 16s. Um, and you've got a horse called Enemy Coast Ahead, 20 to 1 for Ollie Murphy. A lot of these horses coming in good form over the last few races. But mm. to me, I think it's a worthy favourite at the moment. I'll go in with Gentleman Demi in this one. Okay, all right. Well, um, I won't be too long about mine because there's not too much I can say about it because his current form is terrible. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm gone for Kim Bailey's Does He Know It at 16s. Um, eighth last time out at Exeter. And then before that, at Newbury, ran out. Um, but as my dear old friend Sean Barnes always tells me, course form at Cheltenham is everything. Um, mm. One try at Cheltenham last year in October and November. Um, bang on for the trip, two mile five. Um, so, yeah, rather than, like you say, rather than go with a favourite at the top of the market, I thought I'd try and see if there's anyone in there for a bit of value for money. Um, so, uh, you heard it here first. Kim Bailey <laughs> doesn't know he's going to win it. It's <laughs> so, that's my choice anyway. As I say, just, you know, really based on, um, you know, as you say, Cheltenham form, a couple of wins there before. Um, yeah, worth a stab at 16s, basically. Mm-hmm. So then, lads, that is the other ones capped off. The big one. The Gold Cup. Here we go. How on earth do we settle this, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll just start us off by saying apologies in advance to all the Santini fans. I just don't see it. I've no. seen it on social media. I don't get it. I don't know what that horse has done in the eyes of the racing public to say that horse is a Gold Cup winner. Myself, personally. Um, is a it's third cup second gone, last year. Eh? He finished second last year. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, se- the, what's the old adage go, Jamie? First is everything, second is nothing. Yeah. Um, and it's got to go up against another horse that beat it that time and won it the time before that. Mm. Um, I think it's too much of an ask. And I don't think it's done enough elsewhere in races, as Sean's rightly pointed out before, that it should have won. Yeah. So... If it can't win races, it should have won, and it can only be second, or has only managed second in the Gold Cup. I mm. don't know what people's belief is. Then, oh well, this year is going to be different. Mm. Mm. I haven't yeah. seen. I haven't seen anything from Santini to prove to me that it is actually worthy of being entered into the Gold Cup. <laughs> I'm going to get it out there and say it as well. Mm. Right now, I will disagree there on the basis. Of as Jamie alluded to, was his second last year. Don't get me wrong, there is not a chance, there is not a part of me that thinks that this is a Gold Cup winning horse this year. Mm. Right? But it has to be in the conversation. I don't know what, I, from my point of view, I don't know why. I mean, if, if this horse was going to go on to better things, the Sandown race where he took on an aged Bristol to make, an aged native river, and he got hammered into the ground. Mm. Right? There is there is no excusing that race from that hole. I, I don't believe there is excusing. There is no... Yes, there is an incline uh, when you turn for home at Sandown, but he was already beaten. This was a horse that was already beaten by native river who has, since the Gold Cup, in many people's eyes, gone backwards. 
this is a horse that, you know, you've got Bristol May galloping ahead in front of him and going away. So yeah. surely if Santini is a Gold Cup winning horse, that those that that's like Glenn said, that's what I've alluded to in the past. Those are the races that he should be winning. I don't think there's an, there, there's really a discussion to be had on that front that there is clearly ability. There is something about that horse because he stays up the Cheltenham Hill better actually than anybody last year. Because if Album hadn't got that lead on him, he, he would have won it. Right? He would have. He would have yeah. won it by nose. Yeah. I think. Santini would have been going away at the line. Yeah. So yes, there is ability, and I agree. But what I don't agree is this year is his year because I don't think that if you can't beat Native River, if you can't beat Bristol to May at Sandown, mm. the only reason I can still see him being in there is his course form at Cheltenham, mm. which again, like I said, is the reason he has to be a Gold Cup horse and has yeah. to be in the conversation. Don't get me wrong, I don't think that he wins this year. I think he'll stay on well. And I've got to be honest with you, if you go on the Cheltenham form, people will be looking at 14s going each way. Yeah, please. But from yeah. my point of view, I'm looking at Native River at 14s and going, well, he's already put him in his place. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. I'd rather go with that because Native River yeah. also has Gold Cup form in the, in the form of winning the thing. Mm. So I mean, one, we get, I, I, What hmm? I just don't get is, sorry, James, I'll let you go That's in a right. second. What I, the, the thing I'm struggling to to understand on social media is where's the justification, as Mark said? Um, and as you just alluded to a minute ago, Sean, like, oh, yeah, you know, he has run some decent races at Cheltenham. We can't take that away from him. But nobody talks about the team that could have won the World Cup. They mm. only talk about the World Cup winners. Mm. And that's my... What, I, what I'm trying to get at is, and so Mark's alluded to it, I don't understand why there's a huge section of social media seems to be able to turn the blind eye mm. to it. It's like, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean? It's like going, well, you know, everybody putting their points across and then loads of people going, yeah, but he, he probably will this year. You know what I mean? That's the bit I don't, that's the thing I just don't understand about that, yeah. about the, the, it almost seems to be like a furore about him and I don't get it. You know, yeah. there are other horses that you, We've all watched on telly and gone, bloody hell, that was a real decent effort that, that from that horse there. And yet they're not even mentioned in the same breath. No. no. I mean, Sant I mean, there's a lot of people saying that Santini, Santini is a slow as a boat. And mm. I think I can I can see that on, on social media when they like give out pictures of boats and mm. coming back and things <laughs> like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's We're just like get, yeah. And he hasn't, he hasn't, you know, he hasn't got the natural pace ability, but he's an old natural national hunt horse. Mm. You know, he's an old, he's like the old, older type. I think they've bred him as an, as an older type national mm -hmm. hunt horse, where, mm. you know, he keeps plodding. And mm. you, you need a plodder, you know, what Matt Chapman says, you, you yeah. need a plodder. But I, I think there's other horses have got, you know, got chances. I mean, all right, you've got Native River, he always comes out. I don't know if he might. He might run out coming out first, like you know, into the field, as in like taking the pace on, like he did, like when he actually won it before. Mm. But then I'm looking at, I'm looking at that with, um, with the Tizards form stable. You can just absolutely knock that out of the park. You can't, mm. you can't have that. I, I yeah. don't, I don't think Native River will, you know, be the top three, top four. I think to me, to be honest, um. I don't think he. I don't think he's got got an absolute cat in hell's chance. Mm. Um, mm. To be honest with you, um, I'm looking at uh, you know elbow photos. He's only won. He's only ran once, and that was at mm. Clomel. But I can see what I can see where Willie Mullins is doing. He's doing the same thing where Harry and a Knight did with Best Mate. Run mm. about a couple of runs, and then go to the Cheltenham Festival and win the Gold Cup three times. Mm. So, you know, he's, he's trying to do that. So he's ran once. I can't see Native River. Throwed on, you can, he won't win it. He won't, he'll, he won't last the, the championship pace because there's going to be championship pace, especially if this, this brand. I think no, with, team, this, with this brand, if this game <laughs> decent, I'm uh, telling you, he won't, he'll, he'll be in the top six. He won't win it. He'll be in the top six. Poor old Mark, had a burst in the tears. But then the other <laughs> thing is, though, I can see. Huh. So I can I can see um, you know a few stories coming in here. I reckon 
you got you got one you got one instance you got a woman jockey could win it so you got Riley Frost mm. and you got um Rachel Blackmore uh, Rachel Blackmore with uh, El Plateau. I thought Rachel Plateau can jump but I think I think the heel could could do it uh, could do him um to be honest with you he gets a little bit tired at the Cheltenham meal I think me personally I think um what uh, Nikki uh, Mickey Hammond said chump Last year, Chump is not going to win it. Chump is not going to. Do... All of a sudden, he won it last year with no pace whatsoever, and he, you know, Barry Garrett, he just sprinkled a bit of magic and ran on mm. between them. And I think that's what Nicky Henderson's done. He's done a little bit of sprinkle of little bit of magic. He's fought the outside of the box uh, than any other trainer, and he's gone right. I'll drop him down a trip. I'll go and go down Newbury and go and you know. Ride him out, give him instructions to go in front and start jumping with pace and see if he can ping a few fences because you need to do that over Cheltenham because, like I said, Cheltenham fences do not, you know, don't give you any chances. And if you make a mistake, they, you know you're going to make a mistake. And I think he, I thought he, I, he was impressed. I was impressed with his jumping at Newbury, pinging, yeah. especially like the last one, the last fence, he made a mistake. Well, it was just a mistake, most probably. Where he's just made he's got jockey legged. error. Could be jockey error, could be jumping error, could be horse error. I don't know. But I thought he'd done really well. I've, I've got a funny feeling Champ is going to win this. He's going to win this by two lengths. He's done the same. Edison's done the same thing with Bob Worth. Bob Worth ran at Leperstown in a Lexus chase, two miles four, something mm. like that. And he, he absolutely two miles four, two miles five. And he won by four or five lengths winning that Lexus chase and absolutely blitzed them in, in Ireland. And then he ran over Cheltenham and he won really well and he won the Gold Cup. I think he's done the, exactly the same thing, Anderson. Oh, you cannot, you cannot get um, you know, get away with Anderson. Sometimes there's a load of Anderson non-believers out in Twitter land. There's a lot of them going, oh, he's shit. He's going, oh, he's shit. He's got to be retired. He's not he's like that. <laughs> no, that's that. Absolutely <laughs> shocking. All yeah, right, let, well, let's, let's let Mark have a go, and then when Mark's going to go, I'll tell you who's going to go after that, all right? Jamie, you've absolutely <laughs> hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> you're, yeah. off the Christmas, you're off the Christmas card list now, Jamie. Oh, damn, and blast. I'm absolutely <laughs> distraught at what you just said. <laughs> I mean, look, before I go on to that, Auburn Photo looking to win three back-to-back -back Gold Cups. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, that's another one at Willie Mullins. You know, his last two his last two years prep has been exactly the same. You know, as Jamie mentioned, ran at Clon Mill last time and then mm. go straight on to the Gold Cup. Um, Native River. How dare you say that about Native River as well, Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a horse that had probably one of the, the most thrilling finishes to a Gold Cup when it was going up the last with Mike Bite, you know, right. and that was just that, the, that, the excitement, the, the roar from the crowd. You know, this is the holy grail of horse racing. You know, every jockey who's going to be there wants to win this. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where I attack you now, Jamie, because you talked <laughs> about championship pace. Yes, this is championship pace, but we stipulated this in the King George, which may I remind you, throwed on one at 20 to one. It beat the likes of waiting patiently, Candes Obo, who had won two. St. Calvados, which is a good stayer. Santini, who went off at second favourite in the Gold Cup last year. And prior to that, his jumping was terrible. Mm. And that's what I was trying to allude to with that. Surname as well. Lost in... Do you also want to go, fight, 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 fight. <laughs> fight, fight, fight. <laughs> I go back to its uh, Ryanair chase win back in 2019. And it also won... Um, at Cheltenham in October last year, beating the likes of Cloth Cap, who's now a six to one favourite for the national. You want to talk about horse that's got stamina, got heart, got desire. You want to talk about a jockey, which has got the will to win. She's an amazing form. Frodon is going to win the Cheltenham Gold Cup. I can't <laughs> get that passionate about this race. And you just kicked, <laughs> you kicked me off, Jamie. You really have started. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Champ, as you said, when it won the RSA, mm. it won one of the most thrilling finishes to a horse yeah, race I've ever it was. seen in my life. Mm. You know, a Plutard, as you say, Royal Pagale, which I hope it goes in the Gold Cup. Kemboy's in there. You know, Santini, as we say, Native River. 
the list goes on and on and on. This mm. is going to this is up a Champions League mm. of horses, Champions League of jockeys. But I'll tell you something, Frodon is going to have every single horse in its back pocket. I'm telling you, this is going <laughs> to power up the hill, battle with all boom photo, Native River in the top three, and Frodon is going to become the Cheltenham Gold Cup winner of 2021. Uh, who wants to attack me now? I'll have okay, a go then, next but, uh, Okay, then, then if it wins, there's going to be loads of tumbleweed because there won't be no <laughs> spectators there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I'm gutted about. That a race so big with so many horses, and there's going to be no spectators there. It's a different Cheltenham Festival yeah. as we know. That's what's going to be, you know, not just the Gold Cup. Every race, all of them, you know, the Champion Hurdle, yeah. you know, the mayors who stipulated. There's all these top quality horses, and unfortunately, we're not going to be there. But in a different way, we are, as we are now in a Zoom call having a pint. Mm -hmm. uh, so whilst I'm texting all you guys and everybody else that I know, saying that, <laughs> don't say I told you so when Frodon steams up the hill and wins the Gold Cup. Right. Well, Mark, you have you have mentioned the winner. You just got the name wrong. What you meant to say <laughs> was the winner of the Gold Cup's going to be Ken Boy. Is what you meant. Oh, to say. oh okay. Um, oh, I'm going to stick with my old mate personally. Um, all right. We all know he was a long way behind album, um, but. I just think he's got his mojo back. I think he's had a couple of real good, decent seconds. He won last time out. Um, I think he could be Mullins' dark horse in the race. We're on for a better choice of words. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick, keep the faith. I'm going to have a stab at him. I might be wrong, but um, I reckon he can do it myself. Um, and I, I, I think it could be a surprise, Mark. I think you know, I don't discount your your choice at all, Mark. In all honesty. Uh, the only person, or person, the only one I am just counting, and that's Santini. I'm sorry, I'm just not yeah. having it. <laughs> um, but um, but you also mentioned Mark, who could come and spoil and make us all have egg on our faces. Is Raw Pagala if it went? Um, oh, that would be an absolute fairy tale if that horse went and won it. Personally, more than Frodon, if you ask me. Mm. I've seen so many people just go, no, no way, not Captain Hill's chance, nowhere near good enough. I'd. To quote Kevin Keegan, I would love it. I would love it <laughs> if, if, it went, if it went on and won. That would that be would, fantastic. But that will be another know, novice. It's going to be, be another, bloody awesome if that ever happens. That'll be another novice winning the gold cup, wouldn't it? Like yeah. um, then, uh, what was the other one? The last novice was it? Um, oh. Paul Green. Yeah, uh, Paul Green. Green. Yep. Uh, the only thing is, though, it took it. I think got it. The, the Gold Cup took Paul Gray out of his, out of his, um, you know, he'd, he'd done him actually, yeah. and that's why. So I don't really like to see that horse get done as in physically. In the same way, yeah, no, I get, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I can't. I mean, what when what was the last um, race that he won, um, Glenn uh, Kenboy? Um, was it a short of a shorter distance? Oh, you got me now. I've closed it down now. Um, right, sorry. Was it two mile? Was it a two and a half mile? Two and a half. I think it was. I don't think it was the same trip. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's the thing. I don't know if he he could go up in trip and and you know going up three miles and you know, well, and, you know and I mean, two furlongs. He, like I say, he, we know he's had a spin there last time because he was a long way behind album twelve lengths to be precise. Um, yeah. But I'm just I'm just hoping that you know. A couple of, like you say, spin round last time over a slightly short trip and that, and, and, and prior to that, you know, I think he's had a decent bit of prep this time round. Do you know what I mean? I, I can't really remember, if I'm honest, last time round exactly what the prep was, but yeah, um, I do think um, if I was to put my neck on the line, do I think Album could do it again? Yeah, he probably could, to be honest. It's definitely um, take good. Definitely. I, he's definitely got capabilities. Oh, he's got the capability. Yeah. He's, got the, he's got the capability. Um, definitely. That album photo. It's just, yeah. is, there any, um, is there any other options? There's a few with a decent shout. And I do think, you know, like say, if, if a few things go 